In our last episode, we fully explored the New River Gorge Bridge. There we found a locked door that we couldn't pick, and we couldn't find its key. But we did find a holotape where we learned that Carl, one of the bridge technicians, took the key with him to meet a potential buyer for a side project of his at Camden Park. In the holotape, we learned that he was going to meet his buyer on the Widowmaker roller coaster. We find Camden Park by following the road south of the Nuka Cola plant. We see it off in the distance. As we approach, we start a daily quest called Mistaken Identity. We can enter through a hole in a fence. This brings us to the parking lot. And continuing southwest, we discover Camden Park. We see a pre-war sign. Looks like cats were part of the brand of this park. Moving towards the entrance, we see petrified corpses frozen in time from a scorch beast attack. Here we find a few scorched that haven't quite become petrified yet. I took the opportunity to test out my submachine gun. Yeah, these scorched were higher level than me, and I didn't have any perks that boosted my submachine gun damage, but man, that was disappointing. And so I switched back to my rifle. With the Scorched Dead, we can go over the parking lot where we find a cooler, and then to enter, we walk south through the main gate. Howdy there, boys and girls! It's Mr. Fuzzy! I'm positive you're having fun here at Camden Park, and we work hard to be perfect. What? Our Camden Park crew is here to make your day with us a reality. In fact, our newest firm friends should come on over to recording. Oh gosh, this cat theme is gonna make me nauseous. Well, it looks like we may have been mistaken for new Camden Park employees. I took this opportunity to use my sniper rifle to get rid of as many scorched as I could find. We saw the entrance to the Widowmaker right here. But first, let's start the daily quest and explore Camden Park before we scale the Widowmaker. Our quest marker points us southwest. We pass through the Strip Miner ride, take care of a few more Scorched, and then meet up with a damaged Protectron standing by an employee's only shed. Greetings, valued visitor. Welcome to Camden Park. Oh. Wait, is that you, kid? I'm afraid my beepers aren't working too good. Get in there, kid. Suit up and get clocked in your plate. I already lied to the boss for you. Okay, well, let's find a uniform and clock in. Heading inside the employee's only shack, we find a Camden Park uniform in one of the employee lockers. It's just cosmetic, it doesn't give us any stats, <laughs> and it looks like a dress! Guess they didn't have men versions of this costume. It's a pink and white striped number with a blue cat on the back and a blue apron. Man, I feel fancy. To the west, we find one of Camden Park's signature blue cat bears. And on the boss's desk, we find a black one wearing a green bow tie. Here we can loot a box of 44 ammunition and we find a note. Reading list. Marty, I need these books ASAP. Benefits of corporate chance, making it to the top, enduring individuals, and money, money, money. Get the holotape versions. I don't have time for reading. Oh, man. I've known my fair share of those guys. Examining his terminal. Employee control solutions, employee infraction report. So oh, great. In the first, J. Miller, employee A. Miller. Oh, okay. Infraction theft, action taken fired. Report details. The employee allowed a child to reuse a disposable cup, which amounts to theft of that child's chance 
to enjoy purchasing another cup. You are kidding me. All right, I'll bite. How horrible can this terminal get? In the next one, P. Cooper, infraction theft, action taken, docked pay, report details. Mr. Cooper was seen consuming discarded Camden Park snack packs outside of work hours. These snack packs are the property of Camden Park, even after they are safely deposited in a landfill. The man was eating garbage. Probably because they didn't pay him enough. And so what do they do? They dock his pay? Oh, that's brilliant. And the next one, M. Porkins. Infraction, theft, action taken, removed. New action taken, promoted. Mr. Porkins again consumed all pizzazz pork gibbs and might meet skins snacks. Ah, oh, that's a mouthful. Update, the Porkins family has made a donation to the park. His new role will be assistant to the park manager. Update 2, Marty Porkins' title has been changed to assistant park manager. Okay, I think we can make a couple of assumptions. With the last name Porkins, I'm assuming his family might own or run the company that created the Pizzazz Pork Gibbs and the Might Meat Skins snacks. Wouldn't you know it, the one guy who actually did steal stuff and they let him off because of his family connections. In the next one, B. Anderson, employee P. Cooper? What? Must be a mistake. Infraction harassment, action taken, docked pay. Brandon, okay, so B. Anderson is the correct name, I'm guessing. Brandon failed to smile sufficiently at customers while working at the front gate. Brandon's actions have deprived park goers of the Camden Park experience. Pay docked pending completion of smile training. Oh. And the next one, S. Cloyson. Employee M. Cloyson. Gosh, this is a mess. Though, now that I think about it, this may be intentional. The manager just may be so incompetent that he gets his own employees' names wrong even when firing and disciplining them. Infraction tardiness action taken fired. Miss Cloyson was unable to make it to work on time. She claims there was no way she could have known that the schedule had been updated that very morning. Of course, that is no excuse. She should have called in each morning or known in some other way. Now they expect their employees to be able to read minds. How was this company solvent? And in the final one, T. Wolcott, infraction decreased morale, action taken, warning. Miss Wolcott was not sufficiently audible during the morning pre-opening morale boost chant. Ugh. I expect each employee to be thankful for their jobs and expressing their thanks through the unifying power of chanting is the least they can do. This terminal is painful. It hits a bit too close to home for me. I'm so glad I don't have to deal with that kind of stuff anymore. Turning around, we find a charisma bobblehead. Nothing says pizzazz like a winning smile. When used, gain plus two charisma for one hour. Moving to the northeastern corner, we can loot a tool case. We find a stim pack, another one of those blue cat bears, some dirty water, a footlocker, and a wooden crate. When we're ready, we can move towards the northern door and clock in to the big green time clock. Thank you for clocking in hey, for your shift. kid, hurry up. You need to get those games calibrated before the boss starts yelling. With that, we start a new daily quest called The Chow Line. Presumably, this is part of the entire Mistaken Identity daily quest. We have to earn Mr. Fuzzy tokens by chowing down on spoiled hot dogs. We also start Daily Dross, earn Mr. Fuzzy tokens by tossing lumps of dross through the targets, and finally Lucky Mucker, earn Mr. Fuzzy tokens by depositing coal into the carts scattered around the park. We'll start with the hot dog contest by walking over to the nearby hot dog stand and talking with a Miss Nanny, Zoe. Well, hello, sweetie. Are you new? Can't say I've seen your face around before. And I remember that face. The boss did mention someone coming by to calibrate today. Since you're new, I guess you need to know how this works. Just eat six hot dogs real fast as I check them out for you. Winners get Mr. Fuzzy tokens. It's easy peasy. Grab yourself a napkin when you're ready. That accent is amazing. What a gem. Okay, honey. Ready? Sit? Go! All right, hot dogs, hot dogs. Where are the hot dogs? 
Oh, over here. There's one. Oh, do I take damage? Number two? <laughs> I don't think I'm taking damage, but my character's getting sick. This is the chow line. We have to wait for a third to appear. There it is. Oh, okay, number four. Oh, five. Oh, I feel sick just watching this. And number six. And there we go. With that, we complete the daily quest, the Chow Line. As a reward, we get three Mr. Fuzzy tokens, some stim packs, Radway, and three purified water. Next up, we'll do the Lucky Mucker quest. And to start this, we head north to find the robot Zeke. Mucking is hard work. This here Lucky Mucker ain't. Give it a go. Another amazing accent. I'll give it a go. Oh, hey there. It's a mite slow today. I was kind of put out that there weren't no one talking to me. You're a new one, ain't you? I heard it were calibrating the time again. All you gotta do is mosey over to the mucking carts and drop one of these here cold chunks in. Them carts be all over yonder, so you gotta move mighty fast to get them all before the time runs out. <laughs> I love this guy. Okay, so we gotta grab some coal from this bucket. Alrighty then. Better get moving. And now we gotta find these minecarts. So thankfully, through the magic of Robco technology, our Pip Boy was able to understand this task, and it triangulates the coordinates of each of these carts on our compass. However, they're not precise. When we get close to the carts, the compass marker disappears and we have to fend for ourselves. To boot, we get attacked by enemies, in this case, Liberator Drones. <laughs> confused. I had no idea what these carts looked like. The timer was ticking down. I found a stack of lucky mucker carts, but I couldn't interact with them. Finally, I found one I could interact with by racing to the west. Here we find some train tracks that round a turn right next to a boardwalk by the river. On the other side of the fence right at this turn, we find the first lucky mucker cart. <laughs> and we can deposit our coal. To find the second one, we can run north of here. This puts us through a playground and past a Nuka-Cola stand with a chem box. We'll have to come back and explore all of this in greater detail later. But on the western side of a train bridge, next to a large tree, we find the second Lucky Mucker cart. Two more to go. These were harder because they were on the opposite end of the park. Heading back towards the Lucky Mucker, we pass Zeke, pass the Strip Miner, and then walk underneath the Widowmaker. Here we got sidetracked by Scorched. And next to the roller coaster loading, we find the third Lucky Mucker cart. We have one more to go. So hopping down, we can move towards a merry-go-round, but passing a bathroom, we have to kill more Liberator drones. <laughs> And here, finally, next to a garbage can by the merry-go-round, we find the third and final Lucky Mucker cart. With the final step complete, we can check in with Zeke to complete the daily. Hi there. Got a hankering to explore? The Lucky Mucker is the game for you. Hey! You done wrong your A game. With that, we complete the quest. We get three more Mr. Fuzzy tokens, a stim pack, a rat away, and purified water. Finally, we can check in with Zach over at the Dross Toss. B -b 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 Mode attract. Procedure, say, greetings customer, come try my contest. ID, Dross Toss. Win prize, Mr. Fuzzy Tokens. Error, Zach personality not found. Personality module load failure. Default personality initialized. Greetings. I see by your uniform that you are a Camden Park worker authorized to calibrate my contest, whose ID, Dross Toss. 
The procedure requires you to perform the action toss on the object dross. Your toss target is three dross containers. Action toss must be completed before the time it expires. A prize, Mr. Fuzzy Tokens, is awarded for each target. Dross container status, timer inactive. Required action to begin, grab, object, dross. <laughs> I think I like that even more than the accents. Okay, to start the dross toss, we grab the dross on the counter. And now we must toss it. Okay, look, I didn't get how to do this when I first started. All right, I was ripped to shreds for it by the viewers of my live stream. I deserve it, but I didn't know what to do. I walked up to the tires, tried to interact with them. No, nothing I could do. And then I thought, well, you know, maybe the dross was a placed world object like a kickball or a baseball. And you know how in Fallout 4 you have to find the object in your inventory, drop it to the ground, and then hold Z to pick it up, and then E and something to throw it? That's what I was trying to do. Couldn't figure it out. All the while, the timer is ticking down. One minute, 50 seconds, 40 seconds. Finally, someone in the chat said, grenades, throw grenades. I'm like, oh, okay. So I rummaged through my inventory and looked for grenades and started throwing them. No, that wasn't doing it. Then they said, no, no, Oxhorn, equip the dross to your grenade slot and then throw the dross. And of course, that made more sense. But by this time, the timer had 11 seconds left. I got the first in on second 10, the second one in on second seven, the third one in fell back out. But did it count? Ah! <sighs> it counted. And I completed the daily quest, Dross Toss. My reward was two stem packs, right away three purified water, and a Mr. Fuzzy token. Don't worry, we'll get into the Mr. Fuzzy tokens a bit later. Now there is one more thing to do to complete the quest, and that is to visit the company store. But before we do that, I want to turn this entire park upside down. Let's explore it. Here we are at the Dross Toss. Nearby is a little stand, and inside we find two skeletons with an ammo canister. There is another ammo canister on the countertop. Since one of these skeletons was in a lab coat, I'm Assuming maybe it was a place to donate blood or get a checkup, we see the numbers 1, 2, 3 inside. Not exactly sure what this was for. West of the Dross Toss, we find a basketball hoop and some atomic rollers, familiar to anyone who played the Nuka World DLC for Fallout 4. And the north of here, we find the Bumper Cars Arena. We killed all the Scorched here when we first arrived at the park. Just outside, we find a fusion generator with a fusion core. I'll take it. Heading inside, we find fire. I think when I killed the Scorched, I must have ignited an explosive container. We find a tool case, a gold tie Mr. Fuzzy Cat Bear, and some Rad X in one of the bumper cars. And that's really about it. Now, I did see a staircase leading out of the bumper car arena. I wanted to skirt the perimeter of the park to see if there was anything interesting here. Hopping out, we can take the tracks west. And here, I found the corpse of a young woman. She has no name, and she looked recently dead. There was nothing on her inventory until, after waiting a moment, a damaged holotape and a worn veil appeared. This is the beginning of a fascinating side quest. I don't want to give away any spoilers right now, so we'll listen to the contents of this holotape and fully examine the mysterious torn veil in an upcoming episode. Moving south, away from the corpse of the young woman, we can finally explore the Nuka-Cola stand and playground we ran through earlier. The Nuka-Cola stand is closed up, but we find a bunch of liquids. Heading over to the playground, we can kill some Liberator drones. Nearby, I found a tent made out of a blue tarp. Underneath it, we find a first aid kit, a duffel bag, and another one of those Mr. Fuzzy Bearcat things. This one with a ruby tie. I foresee players developing quite a collection in the future. The playground is mostly empty. We find a blue teddy bear and a Nuka-Cola cherry. And then heading back to the train tracks, we see a ruined train car that had been used as a camp by travelers. Here we find a cooking station next to some scrap and small antlers. Good for bone. There's a sleeping bag here if we want to rest up. And a couple of meat piles. Looks like someone came through here and cleared it earlier. There is a tower here, but that's part of the playground, I think. We don't find a door or stairway up and the mine cars on the track are part of the Minor Minor Zone. M-I-N-O-R-M-I-N-E-R -E Zone. <laughs> it's like a mining-themed kids' park. 
We arrive back at the shack next to the strip mine, where we begin the daily quest. Inside we find a Nuka-Cola machine with a fusion cell inside. Moving west of here, we can pay more attention to the strip miner. It was like one of those um, octopus rides from fairgrounds we used to visit as a kid. I inspected each of the cars on this ride, but I didn't find anything in any of them. Though on the ground I did find a black candy fan Mr. Fuzzy, which you can add to your collection. Moving south, we arrive again at the employee shack. We explored the inside already. There was a floor safe inside, but it required level two lock picking, which I didn't have at the time. So going around it, we find some gas canisters behind it. There's another shack next to this. It appears to be a bathroom. Outside, we find a medical supplies vending machine where we can purchase stim packs and other aid. And a sink next to this is a first aid kit. And the bathroom to the right is the women's restroom. Inside, we find another first aid kit on a wall and the toilets are all empty so heading out before going around to the other side to inspect the men's rest we can go back to that food stand where we did the hot dog eating contest behind the counter we find a little bit of scrap a few containers to loot and a red x on one of the dispensers when done examining the chow line we can head back to the shack and explore the men's restroom the men's restroom is split into urinals in one shack and toilets in the other both of which are empty behind the bathroom we find a dirty mattress a ruined refrigerator and an emerald tie mr fuzzy for your collection. And just south of here on the shore, we find a wrecked boat. I don't think this is part of the park, but I wanted to explore it anyway. Heading over, we can climb the hillside and then do a running jump to hop inside. In the back, we find a wool fisherman's cap and buckets and buckets of fish. There's a box here with a purple tie Mr. Fuzzy inside, and we find the remains of the fisherman nearby. But that's it for the boat. Heading back to the park, I wanted to explore around the perimeter of the Widowmaker first before heading inside. Here we find some machinery, not much here and then a big junk pile with the remains of the few of the ride cars, the octopus seats, and what appears to be some sort of ruined gondola. Northeast of this is a shack with a dumpster and a weapons workbench outside. Great, finally I can scrap all my junk and reduce my carry weight. I was pretty encumbered by this point. This is another bathroom. We find rolls of toilet paper in one of the mine cars and some dirty water in one of the sinks. Nothing in the toilets here. Heading around to the other side, we find the men's restroom with a toolbox by a toilet and nothing in the urinals. Next to this is the merry-go-round where we found one of those cars for depositing ore. And for the first time, I realized that the responders had been here. Right next to the merry-go-round, we find a sign pointing towards a responder's trading post for supplies and medicine. The merry-go-round is empty. So moving north of here, we find one of those centrifugal force rides. There were a few containers on a platform nearby. This was called the Radioactive Roundup, and it appears to be ruined. It must have been spinning when the bombs dropped, and either the blast or an EMP shockwave or something dislodged this thing while it was spinning, and it crashed into the earth, cutting this huge scar. The fence is broken here, and outside we find another responder sign pointing inside the park. Nearby we find two shacks. The first says company, the store, and the other is the responder's trading post where we find a Protectron merchant wandering around. Outside of this, we find a Porta Diner. Try our luck? No dice. Heading inside, we find the boss. Lastly, why don't uniform? There will be shouting. All right, okay, putting on my Camden Park uniform. Uh, interesting. You must be my newest flushling. You were late. You weren't prepared. You deserve shouting. But I'm feeling generous today, so I'll record your performance as inadequate. Hey, you aren't allowed in here when you're working. This is for valued customers only. They can exchange their Mr. Fuzzy tokens for prizes here. Alright, here's recompense for today's shift. Goodbye. <laughs> okay. First, we're an employee out of uniform, then we are an employee in uniform who shouldn't be here. All right. At any rate, we complete the daily quest Mistaken Identity. And as a reward, we get pre-war money plasma cartridges, 45 rounds, a combat shotgun, and shotgun shells. There's a display case here with blocks that spell Danny B Z O. I kind of want to think this is supposed to say Danny boy. Not sure what the final three letters are supposed to say. On the ground, we find more Mr. Fuzzies, a purple tie, a silver tie, and an emerald tie. There's also a candy fan on the ground here, and more scrap in the display shelves. Here we find two terminals, both of which have the same contents. Mr. Fuzzies prize o -rama. It's perfect to see you. Ooh. 
Everyone here at Camden Park, and especially Mr. Fuzzy, hope you've had an a meow visit. You can redeem your Mr. Fuzzy tokens here for terrific prizes, or just see what's available so you can start saving for that special reward. First, we can explore the Mr. Fuzzy prizes. These terminals work a lot like the overdue book terminals from Fallout 4, or the Nuka Kate terminals from Nuka World. We see a lot of stuff here. The main prizes are the Mr. Fuzzy costume and the Mr. Fuzzy costume head for 150 tokens and 300 tokens respectively. So a unique costume for the collector. The rest of the stuff is mostly a waste. Mr. Fuzzy Pencil, 10 Paddle Ball Ammo, Cotton Candy Bites, Gumdrops, Jumbo Mr. Fuzzy Plush. Maybe that's an oversized Mr. Fuzzy decoration. A Mr. Fuzzy Mining Helmet. Oh, that might be interesting. A Paddle Ball, the Camden Whacker. I'm assuming that's a reskinned commie whacker. And then a Super Comic Book, possibly a temporary boost magazine. We can redeem our tokens. Now we earned some of these tokens by completing the daily quests here at Camden Park, but so far we can only afford the five token list. So it looks like we'll have to come back to Camden Park and do these quests over and over again to get more tokens so that we can get our costume, Camden Whacker, and Mining Helmet. Nearby, we find two bins. One is filled with basketballs, another with more Mr. Fuzzies. There's the responder's merchant, vendor bot Chad. There's a supply shelf behind the nearby shack where we find a lot of adhesive. This was just a drink vendor. The dispensers are all empty and we find the operator's skeleton on the ground. Here we can get a dirty water and kill another Scorched. Okay, looks like the Scorched are starting to respawn. We need to finish exploring Camden Park before the entire place is swarming again. I skipped by this really quickly, but I wanna point it out. On the wall next to the company store, we find a poster for the excavator power armor. We can interact with it and examine it. I'm assuming that by examining it, we get the location of the Graham Mining Company posted on our map. I hadn't discovered it by this point, so the icon would have been welcome. Though I later did discover that mining company and we'll be covering it in an upcoming video. We are almost done with the complete loop. Moving west to finish it, we pass by a bunch of ruined, boarded up shops. And here we find a level two locked door. Ow. Oh. And at the time, I didn't have high enough skill to pick it. It likely leads to a storage shed, but I'll come back to pick it at a later date. Continuing west, we complete the loop and we arrive back at the entrance. This leaves one final thing in Camden Park to explore. And with the sun setting, we can turn south to go through the main gate to explore the Widowmaker. Here we find Tin Can Chimes. Sign of raiders, perhaps? Moving forward, we walk a path lined with chain link fences. There are breaks in the fences, but just grass, carts, and trash on either side. Continuing south, we can disarm two more tin can chimes. There's a stairway leading up to the roller coaster to the south and a path to the east. Going east first, we find a gap in a chain link fence that brings us around to another fusion generator. And here, we find another fusion core. On the wall nearby, we find the note, best plan ever. Pat, I've got a great idea to haze Hal on his first day. Let's just say I stole a bunch of laxatives off the old man last night. I'm thinking those plus chow line equals nightmare bathroom duty for our old pal. To top it off, I'll make Newman lose his mind. He'll be neck deep in customer complaints. Get him back for docking our pay over stupid infractions. Brandon. Okay, well, we read about those infractions and I can sympathize with this guy, but really, poisoning the park patrons with laxatives? Well, I wonder if he ever did it. Turning around, we see that we've been discovered. Looks like it was a Scorched. To continue, we can turn south and head up the ramp. At the top, we find a poster by a door. Warning, keep hands and feet inside vehicle. Supervised children, okay. Looks like the Scorched we killed here earlier have not respawned. We can loot their corpses, which we failed to do earlier because we were in a hurry. Heading out to the platform where the roller coaster cars would have stopped to pick up passengers, we find the roller coaster control terminal upon which is a holotape. Thoughts of the day. Brandon managed to stick me with cleanup duty underneath the Widowmaker. Apparently, <laughs> some group of kids really lost their lunch on there. Typical vomit chain. All it takes is one, and the rest follow suit. The pics were priceless, by the way. But the real joke's on Brandon. I found a $100 bill down there, plus the usual change. People say it's not worth it. But I gotta get out of here somehow. And if sifting through bar for cash makes that work, so be it. 
Man, it sounds like the pre-war employees were all really on hard times. I mean, a hundred dollars, but in the Fallout universe, what is that, like 10 bucks? Perhaps the resource wars were hitting more rural places harder than people who lived in the cities and suburbs. Well, now we're on the tracks, and we recall from Carl's note that we found at the bridge that he and his mysterious buyer were going to be making the transaction on the Widowmaker ride. So we need to pick a direction. We'll start by going south. Here we find one of the cars. Looking in each of them, we don't find much. Hopping off of this, we crest one of the large hills. From here, we get a beautiful view of Camden Park. We can continue along the roller coaster track. Along the way, we see tents and raider cages on the inside of this roller coaster. Did raiders make a camp here? Looks like when done, we'll have to go down to explore that. Soon we come upon another ruined car. Inside we find another Mr. Fuzzy and two skeletons. One in military fatigues and the other holding a backpack. And in the backpack, we find the Westbridge Key. These are the remains of Carl and his mysterious buyer. To find out exactly what Carl was selling to him, watch my video about the New River Gorge Bridge by clicking here. Continuing east along the tracks, they move north, then west, until finally turning around to go south. The tracks then spin around to the east, then north, and then pass through a wooden shack while moving west. And here we get a better view of the raider structure built underneath. I look forward to hopping down and exploring that. We follow the tracks as they loop through the park until moving south, we arrive back at the roller coaster entry. From here, we can take the staircase down and see if we can find a way behind this shack to access whatever raider village was crafted back here. Sure enough, we find a lookout tower and a gate. Climbing the lookout tower, we can turn off the radio to avoid demonetization, and here we find a raider corpse. Nearby is an ammo box we can loot, then hopping down, we can pass south through the gate. Uh-oh. What was that? Oh! Okay, a spike board trap. Oh, okay. It was attached to the bathroom scale. Thankfully, it did minimal damage. We see lots of tents and shacks spread out. We'll explore this entire perimeter in a counterclockwise fashion. So moving north-northeast, we see a platform here. We can loot a raider corpse and a duffel bag. We find scrap to the north, lining this wall. And then to the west, we find another path leading outside. This also is booby-trapped, but from this side, we can disable the handmade triple. Wire. Whoa! Uh, what? <laughs> okay, I triggered the trap and then it broke. Not sure exactly what happened there. Moving through the gate, we can disarm the can chimes. Looks like this leads back out to the river, where we found the employee shack, the bathrooms, and that boat. Turning around, we can move southwest. We find an ammo box on a shelf next to some dirty water, and this must have been the raider's resource shack. We find purified water, dirty water, and nuka cola on some crates nearby. Then looking up at these big yellow canisters, we find a boiled water, and we find a level one locked safe. Picking it reveals even more resources. Continuing along the perimeter of the circle now, facing south-southeast, we find an ammo crafting bench where we can scrap our loot and unneeded weapons to reduce carrying weight. Then moving south of here, we see where most of the raiders were when they died. We find an end of dungeon steamer trunk right next to a level two locked safe. On the ground, we find corpses and skeletons. In the back of the truck, we find corpses and skeletons. But notably here, we find a chem box and two submachine guns, good for mods. Next to this is a power armor station. I don't know if power armor is supposed to spawn here or not. I didn't find any here in my game. And here to this, we find the Raider's Prey, a settler corpse on a table. Were they about to butcher her? We do find a bone saw and a hacksaw near her body. We find more settler bones inside these raider cages. And on a barrel next to the settler is a chem box. East of her corpse are three beds, two sleeping bags and a mattress. There's a nuka cola back here. And then we find hanging radstag, which we can loot for the radstag meat. Important for crafting, because cooked radstag temporarily improves our carrying capacity. On a table nearby, we find cutlery and a recipe for the rad scorpion flesh. We can loot all this cutlery and then sit down at a cooking station to cook up all our meat. With that, we fully explore Camden Park. 
We can now take the West Bridge Key back to the new River Gorge Bridge and start the side quest that we found on the body of the young woman here at Camden Park. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week here on my channel, so if you don't want to miss those adventures, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My shirts come in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes and in a wide array of colors. You can find my designs on other products as well, like stickers, smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all this coming week with more brand new videos and new live streams.